once again, the 9-11 is reinventing itself. It was a very big treat for the whole engineering team. So it's a hybrid just to boost performance? I'm really curious to see how this tech is going to compare. Wow, I'm going to race the next Formula One driver. Welcome to the world premiere of the new Porsche 911 in Stuttgart. Since its birth, the Porsche 911 has caused a sensation by reinventing itself and repeatedly setting new standards for sports cars with technical innovations, but at the same time, remain true to itself. Now today, I have quite the few special treats for you. Iconic cars, as well as great guests, fascinating tech, and not forgetting nail-biting race action. But first up, we will be talking to Frank Moser, who is the man responsible behind the $2 sports cars at Porsche. Frank, the 911, the icon of the brand. How big of a challenge was it for you to take it to the next level? It's always a huge challenge because we need to bridge the gap between shaping the future of the 911 and maintaining as much as possible of the unique DNA. Personally, I'm very excited to see what you've done. Here it is, the new 911 Carrera Cabriolet. Stunning car. Now, the first thing that strikes me when I look at the car, there's only one main headlight. And correct me if I'm wrong, no more side lights on the front bumper. Overall, on the front end, we are going for a more modern and cleaner look. The main highlight there is the new HD Matrix headlight. For the first time with one of our two-door sports cars, you can choose the HD Matrix headlights with 32,000 individually controlled LEDs. I'm a fan of this. The red light bar, it's new, right? Yes. The LED arc runs seamlessly from the one side to the other without interruption. It seems bolder, wider to me. And overall, yes, subtle, but important changes when it comes to the iconic design. The interior, it's modern, even a little futuristic. The first feature you can see is the new 12.6 inch curved digital display. You can choose from seven different screens. It's a complete new driver experience. And you know what? I couldn't miss this. The start button. It's just like in the Porsche GT race cars. And of course, it's on the left side next to the steering wheel. And the mode switch comes as standard now even in the 911 Carrera. We're actually making a lot of feature standard that used to be optional. But let's talk some numbers. I know a lot of people buy this car because of its performance. Yes. The flat six twin turbo engine is a little stronger than before. We've gone through 394 horses and 450 newton meters of torque. And with more engine power, bigger brakes are useful. And so we increase the size of the discs. The 911 Carrera Cabriolet, it's an absolute highlight. New technologies have continuously defined the milestones of this iconic sports car. Well, today we're going to add another technological masterpiece to this impressive lineup. These cars embody technological innovations. It seemed controversial at the time, but really looking back, it proved the foresight of Porsche engineering. Tell us more. This is where the 911 story begins back in the 60s. Instead of further developing the 356, Porsche decided to construct a completely new car, an innovation with 130 horsepower. Incredible power for the time. Well, that's creating an icon to be, right? I mean, this really set the bar for sports cars and their performance levels. Our 
our first water-cooled 911 from 1997. This technology allowed for a more efficient cooling and Porsche was able to meet higher emission standards. This car has at least 300 horsepower. And for some, going water-cooled, it was blasphemous, wasn't it? But still, this car is an essential stepping stone to the 911 success story. Absolutely. Anything we do is driven by the desire to deliver in terms of performance. And now it's time to add another milestone. This is it, the new 911 Carrera GTS. It's beautiful. I mean, what a way to present the car. She's great, but quite different from the car we saw just now. That's because the GTS features active aerodynamics. You can see the 10 vertical adjustable flaps here at the front. And look at the wheels. The wheels have the typical GTS central locking system. And the inside, it looks more sporty. Absolutely. It's the typical GTS interior with race tags and the contrast stitchings. I've heard that it's a hybrid car now. Doesn't that add too much additional weight to a sports car? <laughs> no, absolutely not. It's a very special hybrid, focused on performance, maximum boost, and only very little additional weight. What is the secret behind it? We wanted a solution that really enhances performance while keeping the weight down. All while changing the architecture as little as possible, so we can stay true to the character of the 911. And how did you do it? In the rear, there's the absolutely new powerful flat six attached to the PDK, which now has an integrated electric motor. In the front, we have a compact high voltage battery. And finally, there's an electric motor in the turbocharger, and that makes it magic. So the hybrid system is not meant to extend the range of driving, but to boost performance. So what's the power output of the whole system? The 911 Carrera GTS has a whopping 541 horsepower, 61 horsepower more than the previous car. It delivers 610 newton meter of torque and has a top speed of 312 kilometers per hour. And most importantly, the weight of the car is 1,595 kilograms. That means only 50 kilo more than before. Those are some impressive numbers, but I want to know more about the hybrid. Thomas Brandl is one of our masterminds behind that drivetrain system. He will give you all the details. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Claire. But tell me, the 911 Carrera GTS, it's a hybrid now. What did you do? The essential innovation is the electric turbocharger on the flat six engine. It can do two different things. It delivers compressed air immediately to the engine to reduce the turbo lag to a minimum. And second, it recovers heat energy out of the exhaust gas to add even more power to the drivetrain. Does that mean as a driver I have to activate it? Not at all. Um, the system reacts to um, throttle and brake only. Um, you can visualize it like a puzzle with the flat six engine and the electric turbocharger, the e-motor in the PDK, and the high-performance battery in the front. When the control units put the piece together, um, what you get is a very exciting drive. So it automatically shuttles through the combinations depending on how I put my foot down. Exactly. When you need more power, the system reacts within split seconds, giving you more boost and torque fill up to 150 newton meter for a faster and better acceleration. Of course, we can do mechanical recuperation when the car is slowing down or braking. And my favorite feature is the high performance feature. When you use the turbocharger to release extra energy running on full throttle or even on top speed. Um, so even in this operating state, the turbocharger is able to recover energy to put it on the e-motor and um, if necessary, the battery joins in to put even more energy, um, releasing all the 541 horses. Thomas, that sounds like some amazing precision engineering. Thank you for that deep dive. But I've promised everyone for some race action. Unfortunately, we do have Matt Watson and a certain former Formula One driver and sports car world champion who are going to line up the 911 Carrera GTS and go head to head with its predecessor. Thomas, how do you think this will go? Let me put it this way, the data doesn't lie. Spoken like a true engineer. Well, let's take a look and see how this goes. 
I'm super excited because I'm sat on a runway in the brand new 911 Carrera GTS and next to me is the previous generation 911 Carrera GTS. And we're gonna have a drag race to see how their performance compares over the standing quarter mile. So to give the previous generation model a fighting chance, we've got someone to drive that car who has a bit of experience in racing and racing Porsches in particular. Let's go over to him. Hey Mark, how you doing? Very good mate. Very good. So what do you think is going to happen here? Have you got a chance? I'm born ready, but I'm a bit nervous about what you're in. Looks quick. And so you should be. So, well, let's see how this plays out, right? Yeah, yeah, you've got plenty of experience, but so have I. And obviously it's all going to be down to skill and nothing to do with the cars at all or the new technology. It's going to have everything to do with it. Yeah, well, you need a lot of talent to drive in a straight line, mate. So uh, you're well versed in that. You're well versed in that. Yeah, let's see who can press the accelerator the hardest. Come on. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one. Oh, yes! Come on! <laughs> wow! <laughs> that hooked up. <laughs> yeah, Mark. Uh, what do you think about my driving skills? I do like your anticipation, son. And what we're going to do now is have a rolling race over the half mile. So we'll do a roll on in second gear from 50 kilometres an hour. Are you ready? Let's go, Matt. Sounds good. Everything's ready here. OK, come on then. Let's get into second, get to 50. Right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Whoa! Come on. <laughs> How is that for you, Mark? It was wonderful for me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't match you, mate. He did a little bit more throaty bottom end. Well, that was fun. I'll tell you what, though, the data doesn't lie. Oh, Frank, I didn't expect that the hybrid system would have that much of an impact on the quarter mile. That simply tests a man to how good the new T-hybrid drivetrain is. Well, I was going to say, a drag race, it's nice, but how does it perform on a track when you combine acceleration with the lateral performance? Of course, we put all our cars on the test track, and the Nürburgring Nordschleife is one of our preferred test tracks. So we put Jörg behind the wheel. Have a look. With the hybridization, the response feels almost like that of a naturally aspirated engine. You step on the gas and it accelerates immediately, which is what you want as a driver, especially on the racetrack. The work that the engineers in Weissach accomplish is impressive. What they achieve from generation to generation is a real pleasure as a driver. Frank, that GTS badge is well deserved. What a spectacular time. It is 8.7 seconds faster than the predecessor. And to bring all the power to the road, we optimized the chassis. We also increased the size of the rear tires to 315 mils. But there was a wing on the car, right? You're absolutely right. That was the optional aero kit. And what about the suspension? The refined sports suspension and the rear wheel steering that comes as standard now contribute immensely to the optimized performance of the car. And if I'm not wrong, you also drove the car? I drove the car several times during development. It's an absolute blast. It looks like the new Porsche 911 will be in a league of icons. Fresher on the outside and on the inside, way more digital. The performance, well, the new T-Hybrid, it is innovative, powerful, and a real game changer in typical Porsche fashion. Now, if you want to know more information, you can head on over to the Porsche newsroom, or you can configure your very own coupe, cabriolet, or targa. Thank you for watching. That is all. Goodbye from Stuttgart.
listen, mate. I mean, I think it's only fair I get a go in the new car. Come on, please. All right. OK, I'm not going to make it easy for him. Let's just move the seat into a really awkward position because I know he's quite tall. There you go. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. He's even shut the door on me. Oh, what a gentleman. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, start the race. Start the race. Come my, on, quick. Come my on, legs start the cannot race. Get in here. Start it. What a combo. Oh my god! <laughs> I think I've just been found out. <laughs> you just took off. I I had no chance. This is quick. Like this is quick, but that that is wow. This is hooked up and departed. <laughs> oh.